Hello everyone, I am Sean and today I'm going to be talking about some manga recommendations for the mature reader. Before I start, I know if I don't say this, even if I do say this, I'll probably still get this, but if I don't say this, Berserk is not on this list and I know people will be like, Sean, have you read Berserk? Where's Berserk? Berserk is amazing. I've read 14 volumes of Berserk. I don't like as much as what I'm going to mention. So this is my list. Berserk is on everybody else's list. So it's not on this list, but these are, if you like Berserk, you might like some of these. We will start off with 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. This is a fantastic series. It is complete. Um, these are the perfect editions that are coming out right now. This is volume five. This is a great series. It follows a group of adults, who, their friends, their friend, childhood friends. And in the first volume, you kind of, it goes back and forth between the present day when they're adults and the past when they're kids. Their childhood game, if you will, their like comic book they wrote, they called the Book of Prophecy. Things from that book they wrote are coming true. And there's this symbol that they used that was like their, their club symbol. And there's now this cult that's using this symbol. They think one of their childhood friends is behind this cult. It goes into, I mean, there's like these time jumps. There's this huge cast of characters, really interesting stuff. The further I get into it, I'd say it's more sci-fi. I feel like it starts out kind of like a thriller mystery, but there are some sci-fi elements that are introduced later. Have not finished the series. I'm waiting on the perfect editions. You can still buy the single volumes, but I like the two volumes in one. Highly recommended. If you haven't read any Urasawa, I would check this one out. Monster is also good, but I think I, I've read all of Monster. I think I'm preferring 20th Century Boys. Next, we have one you've heard about on this channel. This is Vinland Saga. So I know Elliot talks about Vinland Saga a lot, which is good because it's great. This is about Vikings. There is quite a bit of violence in it, but also the best character development I think I've ever seen. This volume in particular, if you read it, you know. If you haven't read it, you don't know. So get on it. This is a great series. The transformations of the main character is really, I think, the draw for it. There are currently 10 of these, 10 of these volumes. These are also two-in-one volumes. I think they're the only ones you can get in the U.S. though. So there's 10 of these out right now. The series is still ongoing, and I think the 11th one is coming out soon. But I won't spend too much time on this because I know, like I said, Elliot is, she's pushing this one, rightfully so. Next, we have Blade of the Immortal. This is published by Dark Horse. So this is another one where the entire series is complete and there are single volumes out and now they're releasing these omnibus editions. What is it about? This girl right here, her name is Rin. Her father was a samurai and he is murdered at the beginning of the series by a clan. They're basically trying to eliminate sword schools and she decides to try to take revenge. This guy here, Manji, is her bodyguard. He is immortal. So if you cut off his arm, he can like reattach his arm. It's not a quick process, but he can. He heals. He's basically Wolverine. I will say uh, it's kind of a rough start. Um, I would give it two of the Omnibus collections uh, to see if you like it, which I think is probably about four or five volumes of the normal editions. The last three I have here do get that mature label they say explicit content on them so keep that in mind but i have i want to say this wrong because i don't even know how to say it i have dead dead demons dead 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 destruction yes that is its title you can see it on the side there this is a series by inyo asano his newest series and i'll actually mention another one of his series at the end this one I just picked up from the library. I've read five volumes. I believe there are seven out. And it is fantastic. There's just a couple girls, high school girls, 
they're worried about graduation they're worried about getting into college one of them just plays a ton of video games and talks about taking over the world and using marshmallows for bullets she's kind of out there but she's hilarious it's kind of a slice of life about them and their friends but the catch is there was also an alien invasion so there is just this giant mothership hanging out over tokyo that they can't really blow up because then it'll fall on tokyo killing people we don't want that amongst this kind of slice of life stuff you'll see like signs that like tally how many deaths there were that day because like you know a little flying saucer will come through and they'll shoot it down and they'll crash into a building and like kill some people it's out there it is very interesting and the further i've gone into it there are more themes that are coming in obviously war isolationism militarization what else there's some, it touches on ptsd there's a lot it's so it's so interesting and it's so strange and it's also hilarious but tragic man there's some stuff in here that is like okay all right next we have the fantastic vagabond by takahiko inui this has <laughs> the best art uh that you will see in a manga in my opinion i mean i'm still not sure if i can open the books up but you can see the cover there. That's amazing. That's amazing art. There's some more on the back. Uh, this is the Viz Big Edition, which is three volumes in one. I think these are really the only ones in print. I could be wrong about that, but I think the individual volumes are hard to pick up at this time. It is on hiatus. It's been on hiatus for a while, so keep that in mind before you start. If, you, if you're a person who needs a story to have an ending, <laughs> Probably don't pick up Vagabond. It is about Aomoto Musashi. He was a real life samurai. This is kind of a fictionalized, fictionalized account of his life. We just watch him kind of develop as a swordsman and kind of develop as a person. He starts out the series just kind of wandering around, challenging people to duels. He wants to become invincible under the sun. And we also, more characters are introduced and we kind of get to see you know some other swordsmen other warriors where they came from and obviously there's one in particular i don't want to spoil anything but there's going to be a collision of the two these two mighty warriors so it's such a vague way to describe this but it's kind of philosophical um there's like the best fight scene i've ever seen in anything in any manga any comic book in this series so if you're into that check it out it's the best art all right so this last one is another Inyo Asano series probably his most favorite not favorite most famous um this is Goodnight Poon Poon I actually have this digitally so I will I'll try to show it to you without it glaring off of my kindle here but Goodnight Poon Poon is slice of life it is really tragic and depressing. So if, you know, go into the series knowing that. Basically you see this boy named Poon Poon grow up like from grade school all the way to his early 20s. And his life is pretty rough. We'll just put it that way. The catch though, and this is kind of, it's, it's very, it's interesting to me. Uh, Poon Poon and his kind of immediate family, they're drawn like little bird people, and that's kind of why I, oh, I want to show it. So hopefully you can see that without the glare. He's like a little bird guy. So him and his family are drawn like that. They are people though. They're, they're not bird people, they're people. It's just like, that's how they're depicted in the series. It's rough. It's a rough series. Poon Poon changes. I mean, he goes through some stuff. His life has not been easy. And I think by the time I finish Dead Dead Demons, I'll be, I'm kind of interested to see which one I like better. Because Dead Dead Demons, it touches on, as I said, it's kind of some mature topics, but the characters themselves, I really enjoy. Poon Poon, he's, he's so, I don't want to say anything. He can become kind of difficult to connect to, but it's, it's really good. I would 
tread carefully if you're uh, if you're just not into sad stuff. It, it gets pretty sad. We'll say what kind of detracted for me personally is about I want to say maybe two thirds of the way through. There's this other plot that comes in that has nothing to do with Poon Poon, and it has to do with the creation of this cult following in Tokyo, and it's bizarre. And I, I will say that's another thing that's different from Poon Poon and Dead Dead Demons. Poon Poon has a lot of kind of surrealist aspects to it. I mean, obviously he's drawn like a bird person, but there are there's a lot of things that happen you're like that actually happened so it gets weird there's some like weird surreal stuff going on there's a lot of stuff that makes it maybe more difficult for the reader to digest to understand but at its core i mean it's it's this kid's life you know going from an innocent boy to teenager kind of rebelling early adulthood and all that confusion there and it's just a lot of stuff happens to little poon poon that's it thank you for tuning in let me know if you've read any of these let me know if you're reading dead dead demons because it's like my current thing right now i'm really enjoying it let me know your suggestions i predict someone will suggest jojo's bizarre adventure and i am planning on reading that so that is it Thank you for watching.